All right, today we're gonna to do lesson 2.1, writing and graphing inequalities. Tonight, for your homework, all right, I combined lesson 2.2 and 2.3, so you're gonna do your flipped classroom tonight and you're gonna watch 2.2 and 2.3 and fill in the notes that I give you in just a few minutes, all right? With that being said though, before you can learn how to solve inequalities, which you're gonna to do tonight, you have to know what an inequality is, you have to know how to write them, how to graph the solutions. So that's what we're gonna look at today in lesson 2.1. We're going to write and graph inequalities. So first of all, our essential question, how can you use an inequality to describe a real life statement? Well, what is an inequality? Right? It's a mathematical sentence that compares two expressions. The key word here is compares, because in chapter one, we covered equations, and equations were two expressions set equal. But in an inequality, we're going to use our greater than or less than symbols. So we're just comparing two mathematical expressions. The solution of an inequality. Again, if I plug a value into an inequality and it makes a true statement, it is considered a solution. So we're going to look at that also today. Now before we do that though, let's look at our symbols and let's review because I know during the summer, you may have lost all of your memories on these inequality symbols. So who can tell me what this inequality symbol right there says? Trevin? Um, less than, all right? So this is your less than symbol. If you need to add this to your notes, feel free. All right, who can tell me what that symbol right there is? Joshua. That is my greater than symbol. So if you need to add that, add that. Now when we graph inequalities in a few minutes, if your symbol is just less than or just greater than, you're going to use this open circle. And we'll talk about why in a little bit. But just less than, just greater than, we use an open circle. All right, who can tell me what this symbol says? Less than or equal to. This is my less than or equal to. Okay, that line underneath the symbol means or equal to. And who can tell me what this one is right here? Shonda? This is my greater than or equal to, all right? Very good, so understanding that the line underneath it just means or equal to. All right, when we're graphing inequalities and our symbol is less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, we're gonna color in our dot and we'll talk about why in a little bit. Now this next note is really for tonight's lesson, but I wanna go ahead and talk about it with you right now. Um, because when you solve inequalities, if the last thing that you do is multiply or divide by a negative number, the key word is you're dividing by or multiplying by a negative number, you must flip the inequality symbol. Now, today we're going to rewrite an inequality. And I want you to understand, rewriting it is completely different than actually flipping it, all right? So if the last thing you do to solve an inequality is to multiply or divide by a negative number, you must flip the sign, all right? So this adds a little bit more work uh, than when we solved equations, but we'll get used to it and we'll work on that um, in tonight's lesson. All right, now let's look at example number one. It simply says, write the sentence as an inequality. So letter A says a number B, and normally we pick our own variable, but we have a variable in the problem this time. So a number B, so we're gonna go ahead and write down B, is fewer than. Now, what inequality symbol are we going to use if it says fewer than? Class? Less than. Less than. Very good. So, B is less than. The only thing left is 30 and 4 tenths. So, that's how we would translate that sentence into an inequality. Any questions so far? All right, I want you and your table to look at letter B and write your inequality for sentence B. All right, everybody, eyes back up here. Dalton, what did you guys get back there at your table? Um, negative 7 tenths less than k minus 4. Okay. All right. This is a good start. So let's look at this. Let's break this sentence down. Negative 7 tenths, so we're, we're good so far, is at least. Now let's talk about is at least. If you go to the store with at least $5, could you have more than $5? Yes. yes. So would our symbol be less than or would it be greater than if we say at least? Than. It's gonna be greater than, all right? So that's the first thing we wanna change. We're gonna change this to greater than. Now, if you go to the store with at least 
do you have exactly five dollars or could you yes. yes so it's greater than or equal to very good greater than or equal to now then it says twice a number when you see the word twice what operation should you think of multiplication, multiplication. and what number are you using to multiply Two. It says twice. So that means I'm multiplying something by two. Now this says twice a number K. So what am I multiplying two by? K. The K. So the two actually needs to go right here in front of the K. And then the minus four goes right after. All right. So we were close, but this is what the sentence should look like or the inequality. Negative seven tenths is greater than or equal to two K minus four. All right. Great job. Any questions? All right, example number two, tell whether the given value is a solution of the inequality. So we are gonna take these values that they give us and we're gonna plug them in to the problem. Now, when we plug things in, I like you to plug things in in parentheses. This keeps us from forgetting signs. It keeps us from uh, not multiplying when we're supposed to. So for letter A, we're gonna plug in place of C. They're telling us that C equals negative six. So we're gonna replace C with a negative six. And then we're going to bring down the plus 4 is less than negative 1. Now let's do the math. What is negative 6 plus 4? Negative 2. Bring down the less than negative 1. Now we read it. Negative 2 is less than negative 1. True or false? False. 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 Okay. All right. Think about your bank. This is how I love to explain it. Think about your bank account. Would you rather have negative $2 in your bank account or negative $1? Negative 1. Negative 1 because that puts you closer to 0. Okay? Remember, when you're dealing with negative numbers, the bigger the number, the smaller it actually is. So this is absolutely a true statement, and our, our final answer is going to be yes. Now, our final answer is yes, but does that mean you can eliminate anything before it? No. I need to see where you plugged the value in. I need to see what solution led you to say yes. So everything on the screen needs to be on a homework or a quiz or a test. All right, letter B. Take a minute. Plug letter... Uh, Plug X equals 2 into letter B, and let's see what you come up with. All right, we're going to plug in the 2. Now, here's the exact reason why I have you plug things in in parentheses. If I don't, and I just write a 2, is 42 the number in our problem? No. no. All right, so we always plug things in in parentheses because we're supposed to be doing 4 times the 2. We bring down the rest of the problem. What is 4 times 2? 8. 8. Minus 25 is greater than negative 2. What is 8 minus 25? Negative 17. negative 17 is greater than negative 2. Now, is that a true statement? Nope. No. no way. So no is our final answer. Now, let me show you what I get on quizzes and tests all the time. I get people who stop right here. All that shows me is that you know how to plug a 2 in and multiply it by 4. It does not tell me what led you to say no. All right? It's this statement that lets me know why you said no as your final answer. So make sure you show me all your work. But two is definitely not a solution to this inequality. All right, any questions? Okay, example three. Now this is where we're going to graph the inequality. Now this is where we're going to take a minute and we're really going to focus. We've learned from day one, I like our variables on what side of our problems? On the left. That is no different for inequalities. Okay, as we solved equations, I like the variable on the left. I want them on the left for inequalities. So this is a problem where we need to rewrite it so that G comes first. But we've got to be really careful because what happens is when we rewrite stuff, we end up flipping the sign when we're not supposed to flip the sign. We're just supposed to rewrite this. So I want somebody brave to read this to me, but start with the variable. You always read an inequality by starting with the variable. All right, Alonzo, read it to us. G is less than or equal to. Yeah. Very good, very good. He started with G, which then caused him to read to the left. So G is less than or equal to one and four tenths. So let's pick up your pencil, let's rewrite it. But when we rewrite it, we have to make sure that it still reads the same. It should still read G is less than or equal to 1.4. So we have not flipped the sign this time. This is where people think we have flipped the sign. No, we just rewrote the problem. It reads the same no matter which way you look at it. All right, so that's rewriting it versus tonight when you learn how to flip it. All right, 
Now, here's what I require when you're graphing a solution. On your number line, I want the number from the answer in the middle. Then I ask for one number to the right and one number to the left. Now, we could all do this different. Some of you might want to add one and do 2.4 to the right and subtract and do 0.4 to the left. Okay, I'm just going to do 1.5 to the right and 1.3 to the left. What you're showing me is that you know numbers to the right get bigger and numbers to the left get smaller. So however you want to do that. And this just happens to be a decimal. When we're dealing with whole numbers, it's even simpler. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our circle. All right. Our circle always goes on the number from the problem. So our circle is going to go on the 1.4. What we have to decide, is it opened or is it closed? closed. Why is it closed? It's or equal to. So we're letting everyone know that 1.4 is part of the solution. I can plug 1.4 into this problem and it will make a true statement. So that's why we color in the circle. All right, now it says G. So all of my answers are supposed to be less than or equal to 1.4. So what direction on the number line are my answers? To the, left. to the left. So watch, I draw my arrow, and I know you're using a pencil on top of a pencil, so just make your arrow line just thicker, and then put your arrowhead on the end, okay? You'll notice on my number line, I didn't use arrows, okay? I didn't put arrows on my number line because I only want one arrow in your answer, and I want it to be able to tell me which direction your solutions are going. So this is what I'm looking for, all right? So make sure, I know you might have learned different in the past, but this is what I want you to do now. All right, take a minute with your table and work letter B. All right, Myrie, B is greater than negative eight. On my number line, what number do I want in the middle? Okay, I'm gonna put negative eight in the middle. And I need one number to the right and one number to the left. So what is that going to be? Hold on, Myrie's helping me. Myrie, what number's to the right? Negative seven and to the left? Very good. Negative numbers can be tricky, but that's perfect. All right, Noah, is y'all circle open or closed? And what number is it on? Okay. All right, it's on negative eight and it's open. Why is it open? Good, it's not or equal to. So this time we are showing how eight or negative eight is not actually part of our answer. Okay, negative eight is not greater than negative eight. But our solutions go what direction on the number line, Noah? Our solutions are supposed to be greater than negative eight, so our arrows should be going to the right. My numbers get bigger as they go to the right. Perfect, how many of you had that answer on your paper? Awesome, any questions? Because again, tonight it's going to say solve the inequality and graph the solution. So this is what you're doing to graph the solution. All right. Lastly, can you look at this graph and write an inequality? Yes. All right. Where would you start? Four. Good. I like to find the number on the graph that has the circle and I like to write it down. Now we can pick our own variable because there's not one given to us. So I'm going to pick X and I'm going to put it to the left of the four because remember we like our variable to be first. Now our arrow, our solutions, are they going to be greater than or less than four? Less than. Less than. And then we just have to decide is it less than or is it less than or equal to? Why is it or equal to? The circle is closed. So X is less than or equal to four would be the inequality. Very good. All right. Any questions? Because that is lesson 2.1.